Okay, so let's have a second talk. Second talk is by Jody, it's about quantum PCP. Yes, thank you for the introduction. Um, this is based on joint work together with Harry Buurman, now at Continuum, and Jonas Helsen at uh, CWI. And it will be useful first to uh, set the stage a bit to recapture the definitions of, of QMA and the local Hamiltonian problem, even though you might have heard them a thousand times. So QMA can be viewed as um, a proof system between an all-powerful um, prover, Merlin, uh, that sends a polynomial size quantum proof to Arthur, which is a polynomial time quantum verifier. And then basically, um, for any problem, a promise problem A is contained in this class QMA, if there exists a polynomial time verification circuit, which uniformly generated V, such that if it's a yes instance, then you will accept the input X and the proof with high probability, and if it's a no instance, you will reject with high probability or accept a small probability. And it is known that you can capture the full power of QMA, similar to how K set captures the full power of the class MP by considering a generalization of K set, maybe the K local Hamiltonian problem. And in this problem, you're given a description of um, permission operators HI, each of which acts non trivially only on a subset K out of n qubits. And you're also given some uh, parameters A and B, which are lower bounded by some um, delta, which we call the promise gap. And then your task is to decide whether the ground state energy, uh, you know, it's here, but for the ground state, uh, state by psi zero is either small, so smaller than A, or greater or equal than B. And they are actually in first polynomially separated. If that's the case, then it can be QMA hard, or capture the full power of QMA. So it's known that reductions exist, of course, in both directions. So um, I've made the arrows here, uh, black indicators are just car reductions, so normal classical polynomial time reductions, and they go in both directions. So if you consider, instead of QMA, the trivial circuit verification problem, which is basically, basically the definition of QMA as a problem, they can do reductions between both of them. Oh. So then onto the quantum PCP conjecture, it can be formulated in a similar way. So for defining it as a proof system, we again consider this all powerful prover Merlin that sends a polynomially sized quantum proof to this polynomial time quantum verifier Arthur. And now we're gonna, gonna consider a more restricted version of what Arthur can do. Namely, it's only gonna act or gonna, gonna access a small part of this quantum proof. And then if you write the definition in full, I've, I've taken here the definition from um, the work by Hadanov and others, which to my knowledge first defines the class QPCP. Um, and we'll come back to actually this definition or like how to define it later. It's actually the problem, uh, promise problem is in this class if um, you can actually just take some distribution and you, you pick some of the qubits out of this, uh, this larger proof, but only Q of them, then in the yes case of high probability, there's a proof that makes you accept. In the no case, then for all proofs, it makes you accept or also reject the high probability. And this is then called the proof checking formulation of the quantum PCP conjecture. And that process actually there exists a constant Q such that you can capture the full power of QMA uh, by a protocol that works like this. So then again, we can define it also in terms of a local Hamiltonian problem. Um, again, local terms acting on the, on the quantum state, um, same definition as before, but now there's a crucial difference. So Note that actually, because all the local terms are actually uh, normal, so they've operated normal is bounded, it's one over M ensures actually that the total operated normal of Hamiltonian is bounded. So actually this delta being constant means that it's actually it's constant relative to the operator norm. So the gap's actually much bigger now than the, what, what we had before. And then the local Hamiltonian formulation actually states that this problem is also QMA hard. And now onto the reductions. So again, from the local Hamiltonian problem, to uh, the class QPCP, there's, an, uh, there's a normal classical polynomial time reduction. But in the other direction, I've made a golden arrow because you only know so far that this can be done through a quantum reduction. So you need to, to run some kind of quantum algorithm to transform the trivial uh, QPCP complete problem and with the circuit ver verification to a local Hamiltonian problem. And the fact that it has to be a quantum reduction or how you should do it was, um, I think, first actually pointed out maybe in original work, but definitely in this review, but never really formally proven this way, but it's sketched here how you should do it. And there were some works later that actually in some restricted settings did this reduction. And this whole work actually started basically as an exercise to basically perform this reduction, and just see what, what would happen. Um, and didn't expect it to turn out to be the case what we had so far. 
Um, because actually it was already raised in his, in his first work to define the class, um, one has a lot of freedom in defining uh, the class QPCP. So remember how one also has some freedom in defining uh, the class QMA. For example, recall this, this recent very nice review paper about the seven phases of quantum uh, MP or QMA. So one, the question was already raised like, like, uh, like a long time ago. How robust is actually this definition that I listed to you uh, of QPCP? Or is it how robust is to making changes to this definition? For example, adaptive versus non-adaptive queries also make a difference. Can we, do we have to allow for quantum preprocessing based on the input? Does it, does it change the class? For non-adaptive um, version of the class, um, can we even consider just uniform distributions? Um, similar to how you can ask the questions for QMA, what about if you consider uh, multiple unentangled proofers? So you go to like a QMA K kind of question, or consider classical proofs, what will change them? And on first day, I will also give a talk that, that talks a bit more about this classical proof part. And so the main results of, um, of this work are that so the non adaptiveness um, um, is actually not restrictive for quantum PCPs when the number of proof queries is constant. Um, and you can even pick the proof indices just um, uniformly at random, but only from a subset um, of all the possible index combinations. So it makes this class actually very robust, uh, which is a good thing. Um, we also showed that if the Q-local Hamiltonian problem is contained in QCMA, then actually this class is contained in QCMA. Uh, so this links actually um, the local Hamiltonian problem, actual a negative result on that to a negative result being applied for the, the actual class of proof checking. And we also show that if QMA k has a constant query quantum PCP for any k larger than two, uh, or equal to two, but up to some polynomial in n, then QMA is equal to QMA2. So actually this connects two of the biggest pro open problems in the quantum complexity uh, theory. And we also give in the in the in the, the main work, which is an archive of some oracles relative to which the quantum PCP conjecture is false, which you would also expect. Also, also in the classical case, our oracles will disprove the classical PCP uh, theorem. So this is more as an exercise that we, we show actually you need non-relativizing techniques just as you need classically if one wants to prove the quantum PCP conjecture. But this will not be talked about during this, uh, for this talk. So it turns out that this quantum reduction that, that I mentioned um, turns out to be the key in getting all these results. I played a around a long time by trying to adopt classical techniques and getting like, these adaptiveness results that I couldn't get anywhere. And then it turned out that this reduction was like actually the whole yeah, key to get all these results. Um, and it turns out to be not as straightforward as was sketched in, um, in this review paper, but this comes at the reward of being a very powerful tool in getting many of these results and showing properties about quantum PCPs. So the first difficulty that, that actually arises, what I mentioned before, is how should one define a quantum PCP? Um, so we want to give a de definition that is, that is still general enough to capture a lot, but we also want it to be specific enough to be able to do these kinds of reductions. So we define it actually in the following way. So first of all, consider multiple unentangled, the possibility of multiple unentangled quantum proofs to capture this power of multiple unentangled proofers, similar for uh, QMAK. And then we consider an uh, adaptive version. So what actually happens, you start with the input and in some ancillas in zero, you apply a first circuit, and then you're gonna perform some, some measurement on a very small uh, subset of the qubits to determine which kind of qubits you're gonna be queried. And query here basically means if a proof hanging in the sky, you take out one qubit of, or maybe a couple of qubits out of it, and then you're going to act the next circuit on this qubit as well as the remaining state that you have after applying the first circuit. You're going to repeat this for, um, oh, did some uh, symbols disappear? Oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully this is clear from what, what I'm saying. So then you're going to repeat this process for, for a couple of times, namely Q times for the number of queries, then you make one final measurement of a single designated output qubit to determine whether to accept or to reject. And this is then, at least uh, how we view it, it's very specified, but still general enough to capture what the quantum PCP should be able to do, plus also capture support non adaptiveness and pre-processing by, uh, by, by a quantum circuit. And then what we show actually, so um, you give a lemma that if you consider Vx to be the circuit that has this input X hard-coded into it, then, um, this basically induces um, a Q-local Hamiltonian. And so that actually the probability that a circuit accepts a certain proof um, is equal to one minus the energy of um, the same proof or the state with respect to the Hamiltonian HX. And then the whole idea is of course that you need to 
to, de to design some quantum algorithm that actually quantumly learns the Hamiltonian up to epsilon precision. And we show this can be done um, to epsilon error in operator norm in time uh, as a polynomial in the input size n and one over epsilon uh, with high probability when q is a constant, so for a constant number of queries. So the spectrum of um, the Hamiltonian H then directly, directly encodes the accepted probabilities of this verifier. So this means that this verifier, this QPCP verifier originally had a constant relative promise gap, so a completeness and soundness parameters uh, gap. Then it will preserve this constant relative promise gap, which is exactly what you want for uh, a Hamiltonian in the quantum PCP setting. However, there might be a potential problem now. So the Hamiltonian we get out of this reduction is actually the following form, which we call the A form. It's a sum of local terms HI, but we only have a promise on the total op so on the total um, spectrum that like all the eigenvalues are between zero and one, so it's PSD. Um, and of course, it implies that also the local terms have their operator norm or like their, their, their is bounded. But we'll see what is the problem later, because the useful QPCP formulation actually this is one over m there. So you have one over m uh, sum over these local terms, and then a promise on the on the um, on the operator norms of all these local terms, or actually the, the spectrum of all these local local terms. And of course, both have still this constant relative promise gap, um, and they are used interchangeably in the literature. But why is this a problem? Um, so how would you then usually put the local Motoni problem of constant promise, back, uh, promise gap back into QPCP as a class, you would usually consider Kitaya's energy estimation protocol. First used to actually show that, Q, that uh, QMA contains local Motoni problem, even with smaller uh, promise gap. And this is actually non a non-adaptive uh, QPCP uh, protocol for Q local Hamiltonians. So what you do, you consider a Hamiltonian of this, of this B form with all these local terms HI, and you consider the spectral decomposition of each of these terms, which is uh, given, given here. And then you define this WI operator, which basically acts on now uh, Q qubits from the proof plus an extra register containing only a single qubit. And it applies some kind of rotation, which depends on the energy that you get from measuring this, this local term. Then the protocol is actually very simple. So what you do, pick an I uniformly at random, apply WI to the K qubits that correspond to, the, to this WI, and also the extra register A, matches the register A, and then you have to see if you measure one. And you can very easily show that the probability that you measure one is actually equal to one minus the, the energy of, um, of this Hamiltonian. And it's worse because it's one over M is actually there. So it will only work for, for form B. Because for the problem with form A is you don't really know uh, a priori where like, the energy is going to be. So you don't know what distribution you have to, you have to pick. And to work around this, we, uh, we use the following, uh, following trick, which we call local norm smoothing. I'm sure this must have been known in the literature before, but we couldn't find it anywhere. And the idea is actually that you take this Hamiltonian in this A form, and you, you make some transformation to bring it to the B form. So you have an N qubit Q local Hamiltonian, um, consist, consisting of these local terms HI, uh, and they are all PSD, all local terms. Um, and then you consider the pro uh, hem them having a promise gap um, of gamma, then you can transform it to a two Q local Hamiltonian Q, which of the B form and the promise gap is now some constant times this gamma divided by two over Q. So note that if of course Q is constant and gamma is constant, this will remain constant, which is good, which is what you want for the, the QPCP. And the idea on how to prove is actually it's pretty simple. You have to exploit the PSD-ness uh, of H to bound the total operator norm. And then if you really combine terms together uh, to actually yeah, to, to spread out the operator norm over different terms. So you, you combine at most two, two two terms together during the whole procedure, so the locality grows at most by a factor of two. So now basically all the results we get are based on the following general strategy, which utilizes this reduction. So the idea is that any class C, which contains BQP, can actually perform this quantum reduction. So it can actually learn this Hamiltonian as induced by such a QPCP verifier. And then actually, we don't really need to do this, but it's easy to to do it in the, in, the, in the proofs, you can actually round the reduction in such a way that conditioned on the reduction succeeding, you will always produce the same Hamiltonian. So the prover exactly knows which Hamiltonian you're gonna, you're gonna get out of the reduction if you succeed. Then any local Hamiltonian through local norm smoothing can be brought into the standard B form um, using the lemma I just showed you before. And then, then one can use the standard tools or generalizations of standard tools 
from Hamiltonian complexity theory to solve the corresponding local Hamiltonian problem uh, or manipulate H before you can actually solve it. So let me give two examples of why this is actually useful here. So going back to this question of uh, adaptiveness versus non-adaptiveness, um, I, I told you that actually this adaptiveness does not increase the power of the class when the number of queries is constant. So the discretion to prove goes as follows. Uh, so k here is, uh, is 1. So if I don't mention k, remember there are not, not multiple provers. This QPCP Q verifier induces a Q-local Hamiltonian, which we can be quantumly learned up to high precision with high probability in, in, in polynomial time using a quantum circuit. Then H can be brought into the stand-up form using this local norm smoothing. And then you can estimate the energy of uh, Q using Kitai's energy estimation protocol, which is in fact a non-adaptive QPCP. And then using standard uh, weak error reduction, we can, we can boost uh, the, the, the promise gap back to, uh, to a half or any constant we want by maintaining a constant number of, uh, of proof queries, albeit a larger uh, constant. So then for this multiple proofer uh, QPCP, so I told you that if um, this Q class QMAK has a constant query um, quantum PCP for any K from two up to poly N, then QMA is equal to QMA two. Again, we have to learn the Hamiltonian of the Epsilon position using the, the lemma I gave you before. Um, and then the Hamiltonian actually now induces not a normal local Hamiltonian problem, but a K-separable Q-local Hamiltonian problem, which can be shown to be in QMA by a slight gener gener simple generalization of the protocol by Shalal and Sata. This is over 10 years ago. Um, and then we know, of course, that QMA is contained in QMA K for any K larger than one. Now by Assumption is contained in this class QPCP K, Q for some K and Q, which is then in QMA, and this actually then proves the, the theorem. We also have some open problems that are still uh, still left. So um, locality reduction. So a lot of works regarding QPCPs, so for example, the one by Nison with our Harrow um, from over 10 years ago, and also the review paper, they actually um, they point to a result by uh, Bravi and, and, and others that actually shows that, um, or they, they, they look about the Hamiltonian catches reductions, or catches to reduce the locality. And actually, so the question is whether is the two local Hamiltonian problem already complete for the class QPCP, even the number of queries is larger than two. Um, and we think this might actually not be the case, contrary to what is, what is claimed in the literature, um, because this, this, this gadget um, construction, it only works, so it only, we, uh, preserves a constant relative promise gap when each uh, qubit participates in only a constant number of terms. And actually, based on an argument by uh, Nierke and, uh, and Anschut, where they give some evidence on why Bernard Harrow might not work uh, for four local Hamiltonians, we can give a similar argument that we give in the main paper that if such a reduction would exist, that would map, um, would reduce the locality of Hamiltonians um, whilst also preserving the constant relative promise gap, even when the degree is somewhat larger, then maybe we already have a direct way to disprove the quantum PCP conjecture. Um, so there's still an open question like to look into this. Also, our techniques, um, because we use this quantum reduction, we can only learn the Hamiltonian up to some precision. So we are never able to preserve perfect completeness. So there's still an open question whether quantum PCP of perfect completeness, whether similar things actually hold um, to what VBF showed before, because our techniques just simply fail there. Another open question is, is of strong error reduction. Um, so we know for, for QMA that you can have strong error reduction. So you don't need to increase the proof size, actually um, increase the, the, the promise gap. Um, and we can actually be actually shown in, in this work when actually you have near perfect completeness, you can use a gentle le measurement lemma to get actually um, some form of uh, strong error reduction, but it's still an open, open question where actually general quantum PCPs um, have this are able to have strong error reduction, or whether you can show some no-go result that this is not possible. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any question? So this Muslim lemma that you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, is it deterministic then? Yes, yes, it's deterministic.
Thank you so much. Yeah. Ah, better. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the talk. I was wondering when you talk about learning the Hamiltonian, how do you get access to the Hamiltonian? Like, what's your Oracle access? Yeah, so basically, learning means that so this QPCV verification circuit that's basically something you you have yourself, you have access to. And basically, this verification circuit we show this induces a local Hamiltonian, mm. which you have to learn about running the circuit. So basically, you run this uh, this verification circuit like many many times, um, and that basically is basically the thing you access to learn Hamiltonian. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any more questions? I've got one more that's so basic that I'm afraid to ask. Could you explain again the PCP version of the local Hamiltonian problem? I, I didn't get how yeah, it's sure. different from the standard one. Oh, okay. I'm going to go back, but the answer is going to be very short. With the... That's why I was afraid it's a basic no, it's question. Totally fine. <laughs> yes, here. So it's different only in terms of the promise gap. So basically, this promise gap is this difference between B minus A. Um, so you have to determine whether the energy is either large or small. And in the normal version for QMA, these energies have to be um, like in first polynomially close together. Um, like some first, there is, so the point is there exists some first polynomial. I think originally it's, if the circuit construction is, I think, one over, um, I think, the, 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 the number of gates you apply to the power two or three, one of the two. So that, that's our polynomial in. And here it has to be constant relative to the um, to the operator norm. And it's also, I think it's also still open, like anything in between there is also still open, whether it's QMA hard or not. Why does it make sense to think about this as like the PCP version of the problem? Oh, it makes sense because if you have the classical um, PCP uh, theorem, you can also think about, so, so if you have um, K set, you can think about, um, it also implies actually that, or also the nurse proof goes this way, that you can think about uh, either like all clauses can be satisfied or a constant fraction of them are not satisfied. Those like the yes and the no cases. So that's why it's a quantum generalization of uh, the classical PCP uh, theorem. Thank you.